It was time for the Kiddush during the Friday evening service in one of my former synagogues. It was the custom, as it is here, on the weekend of a bar or bat mitzvah-led service for the B'nai Mitzvah to come up on Friday night to lead Kiddush for the congregation. It was also their custom for the immediate family members to come up to the bima and stand quietly and proudly behind the 13-year-old. I called Katie up to lead Kiddush and then called up Katie's parents to stand behind her. Katie's dads came up to the bima looking very happy and spiffy and adorable in their matching black tuxes with shiny red bow ties. It was a scene of pure joy. As they beamed with pride from their place on the bima, the congregation beamed as well. A few days later, I received a phone call from a member. It had been the first Friday, so like here at TBO, it had been the family service, and a number of families with their children were in, attend in attendance. The dad on the phone was careful with his words. Rabbi, we came with our daughter for the family service on Friday. There were a lot of children there. The parents of the bat mitzvah came up, and it was two men. Yes, those were her parents. Well, we didn't realize that ahead of time, and our young daughter had a lot of questions. Mm hmm So I guess Katie doesn't have a mom? Correct. Well, our daughter asked where Katie's mom was, and she, and she was upset to hear that Katie didn't have one. She felt really sad for Katie, and we assured her that her dads took good care of her, and she was okay. Mm -hmm. There was silence for a moment. So what does Judaism have to say about this? How would we explain this to her from Jewish tradition? Explain what exactly? about this kind of family? Well, in Judaism, we have core values going all the way back to the times of the Torah that directly relate to family. One of the first values we learn in the Torah is B'Tselem Elohim, meaning every person's created in God's image. Every unique human life is precious and to be valued. This teaches that within families, each individual must be valued for the unique person who they are, encouraged to be their best self. And you know from our traditional prayers in our prayer book that godliness is very much tied to love and respect for each. Um, so we know that Jewish families need to foster an environment of love and respect for each of its members. So those are just two of our values really central Jewish values that address what it means to be a Jewish family. That would be a great start to speaking with your daughter about the subject. He thanked me, the call ended, and presumably he and his wife spoke to his daughter about what I said. But let's pretend for a minute that the call did not end there. What if the call continued? And what if his next question to me was, but Rabbi, you're talking about the quality of a family. I want to know what Judaism has to say specifically about a family where the two parents are both men or two women. So what would I have said then? How would I have addressed how our Jewish values about the quality of a family respect for every individual, love of each family member, an environment in, in which each person can truly blossom into their best, most godly self, may not mesh with a statement in the Torah that a man should not be with a man the way he is with a woman. I mean, are we focusing on our Jewish efforts on shaping a family in which everyone is loved and valued and encouraged to be their best self? Or are we focusing our Jewish efforts on creating a family 
in which the parents must be of the opposite sex, even if they're not heterosexual and they're miserable being pushed into such a marriage. Which, which value do we pick? We can't have both. What do Jews do when values collide? When we can't make two values that are found within Jewish tradition fit neatly together in a given situation. Last night I spoke about how the core of Judaism is and always has been a set of values. Many of our Jewish values have their origin in Torah or later in our Bible. Of course, in our Torah or in the Bible, there are no Jews or Judaism. That hasn't started yet. We have Hebrews and we have Israelites. Our early rabbis who lived 2,000 years ago are the ones who really fleshed these values out from our Torah, from our ancient texts. And those early rabbis, a lot of their discussions can be found in works such as the Talmud. It's when those early rabbis began to really adapt the values in Torah to their modern day, that is when Judaism really starts. Judaism is the continuing evolution of Torah values, adapted for every time and every culture. That is what we are. And from the very beginning, when our early rabbis first started their discussions of how we should live these values in all kinds of situations, some of them new for the rabbi's time, um, there has been this tricky concern. What do you do when we have two values that conflict with each other? And you have to pick one. You have to pick the one that's more important. This is an issue for us as Jews in every generation. How do, we imply, how do we apply our enduring values to new and changing times? This is not something that just was discovered in 2023. This has been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. So here are just a couple of examples drawn from life. You value being a good and trustworthy friend. You want to be someone who you, your friends know can keep your confidences, can keep their confidences. So your friend tells you in confidence that she wants to harm herself or harm someone else. Okay, you can keep her, her what she's told you secret as she asks you to do. Then you'll be the trustworthy friend that you want to be. Of course, you also value keeping people safe from harm. So if you want to protect her or others, you're going to have to break her confidence and tell what she's told you. You can't keep both values, you have to pick. And I'm guessing that as much as each of us wants to be a really good trustworthy friend, most of us would probably choose to break her confidence probably lose her friendship because we value keeping others safe as a priority that is more important. Back to the rabbis, these kind of value conflicts are discussed because they come up all the time. Now, this scenario is very unlikely to happen to any of us, thank goodness, but it is a rabbinic discussion and it involves the mitzvah that we are not allowed to murder. Great, that sounds easy enough. Don't murder people, okay, wonderful. So, what if, not saying this is likely, what if someone is about to murder you and the only way you can stop them is by killing them? What is the right thing to do as a Jew? Do you hold on to the mitzvah of not murdering and let yourself be killed? What about the Jewish obligation to keep your body safe from harm, to take care of yourself physically and mentally? Which Jewish option do I pick? Our tradition teaches that if you are faced with this kind of choice, 
which again, you won't be, but if you are, you should hold up as most important the mitzvah of protecting yourself and disobey the mitzvah of not murdering. You are allowed to kill if it is in self-defense. There are many value conflicts written about in our tradition, and there are plenty of value conflicts that happen in our own lives. We face, one example, a value conflict when we make decisions about how much do we give to tzedakah, the mitzvah of giving to those in need. We're obligated to share, but are we to share everything? When is sharing generous? When is it too much? Do I give to others and sacrifice a few luxuries that I might have planned? Do I give to others and sacrifice my house payment or my electric bill being paid or the money I would have spent on my children's clothes? What is the proper amount of giving to fulfill my Jewish responsibility to share what I have when I also have to balance it with caring for myself and my family? What about demands on our time? How do we divide up the limited resource that is our time and energy? The community needs us to volunteer and help out. We have responsibilities to our jobs. We have obligations to our, to our families. Do I spend the afternoon at the food bank helping those who are poor and hungry? What if my children want me to spend the afternoon playing with them? What if my elderly parent wants me to come for a visit? What if my supervisor at work tells me I need to come in to help with extra work that my team has just been given? How do I decide where my time goes? There are values conflicts we face every single day if we're aware that that's going on. As Jews and as Reform Jews who are rooted in a traditional Jewish values-based Judaism, that is what Reform Judaism is. We are Judaism based on values and adapting those values to modern times. I have put together these very, I'll toot my own horn, these very pretty little brochures that I designed, but it says, our defining Jewish values, they are available in our lobby, and they are just some of the values that we hold dear as Jews, as Reformed Jews, as Jews here at Temple Beth Or, that we strive to live here at Temple Beth Or, so feel free to pick one of those up. Uh, and so we understand that our values and our priorities are at the heart of how we live each day, how we make our decisions, how we make our choices. Being Reformed Jews means we support the traditional values of our Torah, the traditional values that teach us that every individual is created in the image of God and must be respected, valued, empowered to be their best self. Therefore, we know we have a Jewish responsibility to support people of all different sexual orientations. We have a Jewish responsibility to support people who are not, at their core, the sex they were born into. We have a Jewish responsibility to support people who are marginalized because they don't fit some specific mold that society tells them they need to fit. I'll wait till that's over. Okay. As, no, not yet. <laughs> As Reformed Jews, we support the traditional Torah value of not standing idly by while your neighbor bleeds. Throughout Torah and later in the Bible and beyond, we're taught the importance of taking active responsibility for others. Jews must speak up, speak out, take action against injustice, 
against bullying, against isolating or dehumanizing groups of people who are treated as less than. As we enter this new year of 5784, it is our Jewish responsibility to examine the decisions that we make and ensure that they align with our true core values and priorities, striving toward a life of goodness, of godliness means always questioning, always examining, always weighing the decisions that we make and the decisions of society around us. May we strive to align our hearts, our souls, our words, and our deeds with the loftiest values of our tradition as we move forward. Ken Nihiratzon. May this be God's will.